how does it feel to see your recent work get like all of the shares and likes and, and views like do you feel like it's impacted your life noticeably or what's that experience been like for you bismillah yo what is going on guys peace and blessings upon you welcome to episode 56 of the thoughtful banter podcast i'm your host matthew with my co-host hussein yes sir and today we have another awesome guest joining us we have sister paris Stu live from the uk Salam alaikum thank you so much for joining us Salam alaikum everyone glad to be here um you know it's it's like this whole thing like of how we even you know got you on is like it, it's it feels all so spontaneous but so right so some background story for the audience we all know what's happening in, in palestine right now um you know i'm doom scrolling going through my feed seeing art seeing things people are posting about the situation and i see this really great digital um digital art piece that all my friends are sharing on their story and it's and i'll post it like on the screen right now it's I like think, i think a lot of people saw it because i saw it on multiple people's stories yeah even before i saw it on your story yeah um, so yeah it's blowing, it's blowing up it's everywhere and now it's like at i think 2.4 million views um as of today and it's like this art piece that like really perfectly um i guess describes or like showcases what a lot of us are feeling right now um and i posted on my story and then i saw you like my story and i was like okay wait this person isn't so big yet that they're not yet like understanding who's resharing their stuff uh-huh. I like to get to talk to them and meet them and hopefully like get them on the podcast and, you know, fast forward and we're here. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you again for, for joining us. I'm glad you guys reached out. I, I, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, like how does it feel to see your recent work get like all of the shares and likes and, and views? Like, do you feel like it's impacted your life um, noticeably or What's that experience been like for you? I was surprised. I was a bit sad to see I was going through the comment section and reading like what it's like for other people uh, experiencing what's happening right now. And it is very unnatural to be able to watch uh, something horrific as, you know, what's happening there in the comfort of your phone with, with like the best quality like every bomb that hits a building you get to watch it from like five different angles mm-hmm. and i think throughout history people were sheltered from that like whenever a war was happening you weren't like the information and the horror wouldn't reach you immediately and the people who were experiencing it, the soldiers and civilians, they would get like severe P- PTSD. But now I feel like because of the technology, we are like digitally living with the people. But at the same time, I was like really happy to see how many people care enough to relate to that because that was genuinely my experience um laying in bed and crying and like feeling your tears going to your ears and i'm i'm someone who i love movies and i love like violent movies i love horror movies but it's so different when you know this is real this is not like some sort of special effect this is really what's happening to people and it's just so unbelievable um I was worried about posting that uh, initially because I thought I don't know if this is productive um it's just talking about sadness and through the lens of our religion that's not something that needs to be glamorized or celebrated like just being sad for sake of being sad in fact like there are like a lot of literatures that says you shouldn't fall into despair or get depressed about things but also i think it's 
on a positive note, it shows uh, your humanity Then you can emphasize with people who are going through something like that. Yeah, and I, I guess mean, I think... for a lot of, sorry, I think for a lot of people, it's also like the sense of justice. Like sometimes people cry or get sad because they are angry mm -hmm. and it just manifests itself that way. Yeah. I, you made a great point about feeling despair and we've talked, that's something that we've talked about before, Matthew and I, um, and I was talking to a scholar that we know, and he basically said the, the believer should always kind of be teetering, <laughs> teetering on the edge of depression. And what he meant by that was you should be able to acknowledge the wrong and the bad things that are happening, but you also shouldn't ever lose fit, hope or faith that you're on God's team and that eventually the right thing will happen, even if it's later. Um, so I think to your point, it is important that we don't fall into that despair, but it's also important, like you said, to acknowledge the wrongdoing that's happening. And also, as far as understanding our sense of justice, where we should be aligned. Um, so I think your work is great and keep doing it. Oh, thank you. No, I was like beyond happy from like the reaction. Obviously, not everyone liked it and that's fine too. There were a lot of people who point out, oh, this is victimizing us is basically they were like they're criticizing it because it puts a lens it makes their tragedy about us because mm -hmm. you don't get to see in that like short animation you you don't see what's happening you see the person reacting reacting to what's happening and i feel like that's one way of showing the violence without actually showing it mm -hmm. also my intention wasn't about like, oh, poor us, look at us, look at us. Like you have an intention behind each work you do and you put it out, but out there. And after you post it, you cannot have any control over how it's going to be perceived. So I thought mm -hmm. it's a fair criticism, uh, but at the same time, it was more about pointing out how ridiculous it is ridiculous it is because you 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 are being part of it but also at the same time you feel helpless because on the big picture you cannot do much except just like witnessing it that's what it feels like going through it especially like early days yeah i mean i think even even witnessing it i i'm not too sympathetic to that criticism one because mm -hmm. i think even with witnessing those things is a is a responsibility that a lot of people have taken on and it's something that they don't have to take on right so like i don't I'm, i don't think we should get this is not to you obviously this is to the people who are given this criticism i'm not sure we should get into the habit of people trying to of of negatively rebuking people who are trying to actually you know feel like they're a part of solving this thing that's one and then two are you not allowed to feel bad yeah <laughs> it's yeah. also it's also it's like they're um i think one thing maybe not everyone's aware of this but i feel like one of the biggest reasons why your piece is getting so much attention is because it's very genuine and what i mean by genuine it's like anyone can make art like oh this is what's happening in palestine or like this is you know this is what should have gaza go through but one thing about art, you know, is it feels different when you're consuming art that someone's making something from something that they know. You know, mm -hmm. I could make as many videos about Palestinians as I want, but maybe if I'm a journalist and I'm there, it's different. But at the end of the day, there's a disconnect. There's there, there's a lack of rawness there. Yeah. And I think you found a way to actually talk about the experience that m most people around the world, like 99% of people who are pro-Palestine, around the world are actually going through when we're, you know, crying and making dua for our brothers and sisters. And I think it showed like this, it was a very, um, it was like this metacognition moment, you know, like I'm, I'm going on my reels, I'm crying, I'm doom scrolling. I'm, you know, I'm being like that hijabi and then I'm looking at myself crying and doom scrolling and I'm like, Oh, that's what it's like, you know? And I think, um, I don't, I, I think it's a unique way of it, it's, it's, you know, through the thousands of reels we all scroll through a day, there might be a couple that stand out. And I think yours was that one because of that yeah. moment. You know, I think I think it was I think it was really genuine. 
I do have a question um, on this topic, but not, not exactly on this topic, related to your work. Um, yeah. You know, we've talked about this piece specifically because it's what's in the media right now and the relevance that it has. But in general, I mean, if you look at your page, you see a whole bunch of wonderful animations, right? So my question to you is, one, how did you get into it? And just tell us more about yourself and your work. Um, how did I get into it? So I started my Instagram account maybe around like five years ago, six years ago. And, you know, in the beginning, I like... I'm an overthinker myself. I've, I was like overthinking every element that I was going to post. Like what kind of art should I post? Should I like control? I mean, I didn't even had a brand back then. I, I was just trying to think like what sort of art is lacking in Instagram that I need to post. And I also, I thought it would be very nice if, people cannot tell from my art that I'm Muslim and mm -hmm. they cannot tell that I'm female. If I could like divorce those parts of me and just put something out there, um, that would be better because I could like reach more people when you like make it female centric or Islamic centric, like you're, you're targeting a specific niche. Yeah, and you're restricting but your audience. Yeah, 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 and I thought, oh, I, I, I need to make something broad so like I could reach everyone. But it's so funny because when you start making it, it you could like sit down in, in, in sit in your room and think about it and all day. But like when you actually get into the work part, your personality would come out, and you cannot manufacture or design the process I, i'm sure some people can but for me it was so hard to make something personal make something that i care about and not put the most aspect of my identity in it because it's it's so hard when you're a religious person it's so hard to say this this is where my religion ends and this is where i start and this is my uh -huh. personal yeah earlier before when we were recording i think you made a great point as well which is like you know you try to remove the the female aspect from your art you try to remove the religious but then once you actually got down to it you were like i can't really draw it's hard for me to draw this line where yeah. my religious self uh ends and then like I guess my artistic self begins, you know, it's all kind of merged into one. Um, and that's yeah. something that we've talked about before as well. Like you're kind of a Muslim in all of these places. It's not just, oh, I'm almost, I'm, I'm a Muslim when I'm at home, but I'm not a Muslim when I'm at work, for example. Um, yeah, exactly. So I think that's a really good point. It's something that, I mean, the religion, uh, Islam in itself has, like opinion about everything but also because it's so some sort of like a general philosophy for life it's hard to I guess like before becoming super religious there were points that I could separate my culture my family and me but with religion it's so hard to do that because it's so personal it's hard to even when you when I think about ideas and my thoughts and think about them as something that I came up with, because mm -hmm. it it's rooted in the bigger picture, the like big philosophy that it comes from the religion. Mm -hmm. And um, we can cut this out if you want, but I remember when we were having, I guess, like a, the screening for this, we had like a meeting. And you were talking, and this was so interesting to me. You were talking about how you consider yourself to be a convert. And I was yeah. like, what? How, like, is anyone who's <laughs> speaking Farsi a convert? Right. And you're like, well, you know, but like, I wasn't religious before and I made the choice to be religious. Um, if you're okay with talking about that, and if not, that's, that's fine, but you know, we'll see if it makes it in. But I thought that was so beautiful because so many Iranians 
who don't even like at all even ever practice, but like is Maharam, they just go to the masjid, you know, like <laughs> or is Ramadan, like, you know. But it's like because we take we take the deen for for granted because it's embedded in our culture oftentimes. Yeah. Many, many of us will say, like, oh yeah, we're Muslim again, but she like, you know, I'm Muslim. But it's like there's no there's no really any evidence of the Islam embedding itself in our lifestyle. So whenever you told me, oh, I'm a convert because I wasn't religious before and then I made the choice to be religious, that kind of showed yeah. me like you'd be great to have on the podcast because you're very conscious about your decisions and thought process. If if you're comfortable with sharing that with us, um, I think it'll be uh, very nice. Yeah, I um so if you guys don't mind, I hope this doesn't turn into like a wrong very long rant. But I wanted to talk about how I decided to do art because I feel like that decision ultimately led to me becoming Muslim. Um, I mean, in hindsight, I feel like that was like a very important moment in my life because growing up, um, I did my early education in Iran, like elementary, high school. And in Iran, um, the education system is basically you do math, biology, biology or like literature and art. And m most people encourage you to do mathematics and biology because that would lead to lucrative and profitable jobs. And art doesn't have that much future. And people don't, I, don't, I guess like Westerner have a very different experience because I don't, no one encourage I don't, uh, us to follow our dreams and passion. It, 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 it's such a luxury to mm -hmm. think about education like that. They, they're very realistic and brutal about it that you, this is, you go to university not because you have a thirst for knowledge, it's about finding a good job. And yeah. they always talk about it that way throughout your life. And I, I was studying mathematics like all my life, like um, algebra, geometry, physics. And I was just so naturally good at it that, and basically the reason why people want that because you, you want to get an engineering job. And there was this moment in my life that I realized I cannot, I mean, I'm good at this and I do get some enjoyment out of it, but it's so, I'm so detached from it. It doesn't feel personal at all, especially because the way they teach it to you, it's about doing good at exam. You don't make any connection between what you're learning and real life. And I realized I want to do art and it was something that everyone was against it because as a woman and just as a person in Iran, it doesn't have that much of future. I was especially mm -hmm. wanted to study cinema and I wanted to become a director. And I think it, it's the same even in this side of the world that you need to have connection you need to know people and the percentage of people who make so it's just so it's Small. it's something yeah so people who cares about you they will tell you that this is not something you want to do uh -huh. and i just it, that in that moment in my life i thought i much rather to do be brave and do something risky instead of just conform to the dream that I just don't have any like emotional connection to it mm. I at least prefer to throw it out there and miss and not doing it at all and that process of starting to think about what kind of person I want to be because uh, that was initially led to me thinking I want to be someone who's true to myself. And for doing that, you need to be brave. You need to take risk. And, if, and then, you know, it's such a, I guess that's a big 
again, philosophical question of what kind of person you want to be. And in the core of that question is the question of God, I think, because you're going to be, you're going to have a very different life if your answer is no, there is no God then you have to define things for yourself and come up with the roadmap. But if you say there is a God, then the pathway is different, but which God, what God, what kind of relationship I want with the God and what God expects from me. And I grew up in a very, I guess my experience of being an Iranian, uh, I grew up in a very secular family and religion no one talked about religion and whenever re people talked about it they talked about it in a negative way through this like lens of people who are religious they're uneducated they are not intelligent they're superstitious mm -hmm. and it wasn't something that i i feel like even and this is like something that I often talk whenever I talk to my family I said to them I feel like even if you're rejecting the religion religion is something that you still have to take seriously because of the impact it has in the world but in our family I guess it never was a serious thing we never participate in any religious holidays or celebration and when at that age, I thought I need to figure out for myself, separate from the influence of my family. And it wasn't just my family, all of my, I was growing, growing up in this environment that all of my friends also felt the same way. It was this bubble of people not being religious, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I thought I need to figure out for myself how I'm going to answer this big question if there is a God what kind of person you want to be and stuff like that and that ultimately led to me what? finding Islam I I was lucky that my parents they sent me to UK and I had some sort of physical and mental space from that environment mm -hmm. and it gave me a space to like experience things for the first time like in a fresh way and I have to admit even though I grew up in an Islamic country I've never read Quran from start to finish you you, you would teach they would teach that to you in school but I've never like discovered it for myself mm -hmm. and read it for myself so like like most people who I guess like the experience is so similar when people like read Quran they're like oh my god I didn't know it's like yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah must be that must be a, a complex I mean we don't have to keep this in mind. I'm just curious are your parents and your family now aware that you're religious or are you kind of in taqiyya right now N no they they know um they knew because I, I kind of start getting into Islam and, you know, they were like, at, at the time, I was still in Iran and there were so many groups and people like the, the, the pattern is so similar. Like there's someone who answered question and you go and there are like people who are like part of and everything look, feels so cult-like and I, I went to so many different people and in Iran uh, I don't know if you guys know this there's like Sufi sort of mm -hmm. like a mystic version of Islam like Irfani and I yeah 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 that, that was my gateway because mm -hmm. I really I really love Rumi and when you get into his poetry it's so rooted in Islam that you eventually you have to go and read the book that he's keep referencing to and I eventually and it's so scary at that time because you're so uneducated I mean I was I didn't if if someone tells me this is the view of Islam I would just believe it because mm -hmm. I didn't have any not I didn't have any 
um, individual research into the literature. And I've done a research process for three years. And through that process, everyone knew that I'm like slowly developing a taste for <laughs> religion. Uh <-huh>. and <laughs> I was, I remember the first Ramadan, I was doing it maybe in secret because all of my friends, they left to go back to the country to visit their family. It was during the summer and I did it on my own and I start like praying and I start like following the dietary of Islam but it became, I guess, serious for everyone around me when I start covering my hair. It's mm. like... Yeah, like that's the like most big, visible signal. Right? Yeah, it's like you're yeah. wearing the un uniform now and yeah, everyone's yeah. panicked. Like, but uh, after a while, everyone like accepted it because they, they, were, they were like genuinely, they were worried mostly because you left the left house for the first time on your own in a foreign country they don't know what's going on and then you become super religious <laughs> I could see that from from their perspective it's a bit scary but then I guess when I talk to them they realize that no I actually spend time and thought about it mm -hmm. and look into it Well, I mean, Smala, that's a that's a beautiful story. Um, yeah, I didn't even think it would go there, but I'm I'm liking it. I'm like, this is thoughtful banter. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Hussein, do you have any questions? I want to go back to like something you said at the beginning of kind of uh your what you were talking about. Um, basically, how you started the journey was when you decided to become an artist. Um. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to focus so much on the religious aspect of it, but it was interesting what you're talking about as far as, you know, you studied math and you studied science, like biology. And those were the things that were encouraged because those were the things that got you good jobs. In the West, it's not really too much different. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, the way we kind of look at college is still primarily with that, you know, the it's not, again, like you said, you don't go because you have a thirst for knowledge. You go because you're going to get a degree that hopefully is going to get you a job that pays well. Um. I think the thing, the thing that's slightly different about the West maybe compared to other places because we have so much abundance that mm -hmm. you can still actually make a career as an artist or make a career with an unconventional degree. It's just that, you know, that kind of pathway is not as mapped out. You know how you were mm -hmm. talking about, you know, if my life, if there is a God, then my life is going to look X, Y, Z. But if mm -hmm. there isn't a God, if I decide there isn't a God, then I kind of have to, you know, make some of these things for myself True, yeah. that would other that would otherwise be charted if there if i had decided there was a god that's kind of like the opposite with career wise yeah <laughs> yeah you know it's if you go stem you know science uh technology engineering or math it's like you have a very well charted path if you go <laughs> you know english or if you go philosophy i was a philosophy major um oh, or if you go art you know you know the path is not as clear and so i think still that anxiety exists for parents and you know elders when they're like oh if your path is not as clear we don't want you to go down why don't you go down the tried and true um so that's probably why it's remained some of the same but it was just an interesting point that i kind of wanted to yeah. address yeah and i wanted to actually put the lens back on your work for our audience who um may not know about it you know, I'm, I'm going through your instagram right now and I, I remember when we had our conversation i think you described yourself as a digital art digital artist um mm -hmm. if i'm not mistaken so it's like digital illustrations and animations i'm gonna need everyone listening to this right now to go to um st dot paris to be the first uh her link tree will be the first uh group of links in the bio follow her on instagram and i'm also whenever i'm on your instagram I see that you have an Etsy shop. Um, so I just want to tell people to support you there. You have a lot of amazing work. Is there anything that, um, any upcoming projects that you're excited about that you want to share with people? I am working on something for upcoming Ramadan. And it's basically a journal, but mm. it's, it's going to have, um, it's going to have like a storyline, but you're going to be part of it. So it's, it's going to be have parts that you could like fill in. And 
I feel like Ramadan is such an interesting holiday. I mean, I, I don't even know if we could call it holiday because when in contrast with like Western holidays, it's all about consumerism and mm -hmm. it's about going to the extreme with the food and like buying stuff. But yeah, we have a little bit of that in a little bit <laughs> with the food, yeah. I, I, I feel like because I don't, I mean, I'm talking about my own like very unique perspective on it because I feel like I don't do it with a family. Mm -hmm. It's very different because it, the focus is not on, oh, you need to like buy this dress for the eat or it, it's like you're going to be party every night. So I guess like yeah. in the Islamic cul cultures turns different, but like the, the, tradition itself is about fasting and it's about staying up during the night and meditating and giving away money and charity and I think it's so <laughs> beautiful in contrast with like what like capitalistic countries wants you to do because it just goes against that I just think Ramadan is such a cool holiday i don't know if you could call it holiday it's more it feels more like a boot camp that you go in for 30 days mm -hmm. like when you're like practicing in martial arts to get the like the next belt and i want i always wanted to do, to do something like a love letter to ramadan also something that you could like physically keep to see like this year that was my aim and I reached it and mm -hmm. then you could go back to it next year and just build on it because I feel like you're going to have a jump each during each Ramadan and then hopefully throughout the year you will maintain it and come back to the next Ramadan and you do ha you have another jump and I always thought like because if if I'm uh, with my shop my thought was if I'm going to sell something to people, hopefully it's going to add something to their life. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you want to sell art and art on it on its own is good because it's pretty or whatever. But you also want to have if you're going to have some function with your art, not just aesthetic, hopefully it would be something that they could keep and look back and see their progress you know like a real physical way absolutely um before we end this session um i think i'm speaking for hussein as well you know it's it's been really great to have you on um you know inshallah like with with yourself and all the guests we have on virtually inshallah we'll have a have an in-person session because yes. i know um <laughs> that that'll be better for us but also the audience but you know this this has been amazing um we want to let the people know to, again, support your work, check out the links, the first links in the description of this video or this episode, whether you're listening on YouTube or Apple Podcasts or Spotify, uh, the first links in the description will be Paris Stu's links. She has an Etsy store. We just got some stickers. Go get some stickers. Go get some work for her. Uh, follow her account. Um, is there anything that you want to share with the people, Paris Stu, before we end the session? Oh God, help me out, God. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm planning to, I'm planning to post videos on um YouTube. It's it's uh it's going to be more me showing the process and also talking about the thought process behind the work. So. If you could also uh, follow my YouTube channel, for sure, I would look appreciate. Out for, look that. out for Paris's YouTube channel. If you give us the link, we'll definitely have it there. And also, if anything, I mean, if you made a decision with YouTube, that's fine. But I was gonna say you should definitely have that on your Patreon, just so people people pay for it. But up to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you, guys. It was so nice talking to you. Thank you. It was a pleasure for us as well. This has been episode 56 of the Thoughtful Banter Podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Peace out. Peace out.